Well, Soho has been a red light area in London for 250 years. The vast majority of women work indoors in what are called walk-up flats. Customers don't have to ring and make an appointment. They just walk up the stairs, knock on the door. If the woman is available, that's fine, or they can go in and wait in a waiting room. Every woman works with a maid, and the maid's primary job is the safety of the sex worker because the sex industry has been integral part of the community for so many years. If they get in trouble, they really feel they can put their head out of the window, shout for help, and somebody will come and help them. It's much the safest place to work, probably in the whole country. This is all Soho now. We come down here when we, you know, when women contact us, you know, for help. This is one of the um, areas, one of the courts where sex workers work upstairs. Hello. No, she's just, it's a project she's doing, it's okay. Okay. So you should just keep your camera down. Forty officers come into our building. Twenty go upstairs. Twenty go into our flat. They break down our door, even though we'd already opened up the door to let some police in. They are dressed in full riot gear with dogs. All these policemen are running up the stairs, screaming, Police, police. I'm thinking this is madness. Someone must have been murdered and they're in the wrong place. They kick the door. They come in, hands in the air. Prostitution in this country is legal, which is important to, to emphasize. It is completely legal, but it is criminalized by proxy through the criminalization of, of, of proxenetism and pimping and of brothel keeping. So prostitutes are supposed to operate in a bubble with no economic or social relationships linking them to society because all of these can be criminalized in the name of their help and support. Because sex workers are criminalized, there's a whole career in the police force they called themselves the vice squad. And the disaster, women who call themselves feminists pressed for more recent legislation which included civil closure orders which are now being used by the police to close premises as we are seeing in Soho right now. The problem is that all of this gives even more power to police to do whatever they want and people feel at their mercy. Now, we have always said that the police, far from criminalising sex workers, should be prioritising safety and protection. Women who have been driven out of the premises are now faced with either working on their own or some women were discussing working on the street. In one case, a woman was driven out and she went to work in the north of England on the street and she was murdered. They say I'm a victim, but treat me like a criminal. The maid and I are handcuffed and held to the floor. They smash up everything in our flat. We tell them that we have a key to the safe, but they smash it open all the same. They take 467 pounds and refuse to give me a receipt. Now they're gonna search me bag. Add my own money in it and the bank statement to prove it was mine. They take everything. I'm Romanian. 
and the policeman keeps telling me I don't have the right to be here, but I do. I'm a self-employed sex worker and I have the right to live and work here. A policeman shouts at me that if I do not tell him who owns the flat, he will tell my mother in Slovakia what I do. He will not stop until the maid tells him I am an adult and he has no right to tell my parents anything. They have their own television people with them. Reporters. They're having photographs taken of the so-called vulnerable women. Next day, they're all over the internet. I am taken outside in my underwear. It's freezing. It's only because a neighbour upstairs gives me a cardigan that I have anything on at all. Is this to make a show for the cameras? The original reason they said that they were going to do these raids in Soho was that they were going after trafficking and victims of rape. They didn't find any uh, women who were trafficked or traffickers or anybody who had been raped. And they changed their story and they said they were going after drug dealers. And when it came down to it, it was petty criminality. Some women had received stolen watches and stolen mobile phones. That is what it amounted to. Tonight's been the culmination of 18 months worth of work and tonight we've deployed over 200 officers to execute 30 warrants at different premises in Soho where we believe um, drug dealing, handling stolen goods um, and in some cases um, vulnerable women may well have been trafficked and forced into prostitution. Our vision is that we can take the danger out of Soho. So yes, Soho's edgy, yes, you know, it's current people come here because it's Soho and what that offers. But actually when people come here, we want them to be safe. We don't want them to be robbed. Um, we want them to um, be able to enjoy, you know, their night out. We want them to um, be able to enjoy, you know, their night out. We think that the police raids were initiated by the desire of property developers who wanted to get their hands on particular properties. Working together with the local council, who also are encouraging development, to go after women who they say are being forced to work in the sex industry. <laughs> Prompted by this, they managed to place closure notices on 18 flats in Soho. Hello, we're here to let you know about the raids that have gone on in Soho. <laughs> We're just here to lend our support today because sex workers have been uh, evicted from these flats and told they can't work in them anymore, which is really dangerous for them. It means that they don't have a safe place in town to work anymore, they can't work together. And some sex workers have been talking about moving to work on the street. That's obviously not what's best for them. I think it's very important to have a red light district. I think it's important to have an area where people who are looking for trouble can find trouble. I live round the corner from here. I'm out all hours of the night walking my dog. It is safer than the suburbs here because everything is out in the open. That's the dog. She's called Jezebel. She's a Soho dog. If you say the word ball, she'll look at you. Jezebel, Jezebel, what's your ball? There's certainly an element of trying to clean up Soho. In fact, this entire area is going to be regenerated into a brand new complex of shops and flats. Paul Raymond made his fortune on the back of the sex industry in Soho, and without sex workers it wouldn't be what it is today. And the only reason people want to come to live here is because the place is glamorous and sexy and sleazy, and that's because of sex workers. So it's disgraceful, really, that they're trying to get sex workers out now to make way for luxury flats. Stuff like this just adds to the general public's idea of sex work as something wrong, something that needs to be swept away, something that needs to not be seen in a nice part of town. We should be here um, and we shouldn't be ashamed and people should know that we're here. We have legal 
leaflets were, with more information, so please just come over and get some leaflets. Hi boys, do you want to come and have a listen? Now they're going to take this girl I work with. They say that she's a vulnerable person. She's 30 years old, has children, supports her family back home. She has holiday, two, three times a year. These girls pay their own way. But the police say she needs to be taken to a place of safety. They ask me if I was trafficked. I say no over and again. I tell them I don't want to go with them, but they make me. They say they're taking me to a place of safety. This girl's crying her eyes out. I say, you can't take her. Where are you taking her? But they won't tell me. I go with them. I'm held and questioned for a while, and then they tell me I can go home. I have to demand that they pay for a taxi to take me home. They want to put me out in the street in the middle of the night. Unfortunately, uh, trafficking as a phenomenon and anti-trafficking as an instrument has become a hidden mechanism of law enforcement. I conducted a piece of research for the Economic and Social Research Council. Out of 67 women, only a small minority corresponding to 6% to 7% of women felt they had been exploited and trafficked more specifically. Traffic needs to be separated from exploitation. Traffic is a very specific and dramatic circumstance in which people are forced against their own will, uh, you know, to sell sex. So the UK border agency is always present when the police raids and intervenes. This is what I'm saying, is that it's a perverse mechanism of exclusion that in the name of rescue and help actually becomes a perfect mechanism to deport the largest number possible of migrants. No big shot feminist is going to protest loudly at the treatment of a group of women who are barely legal. They don't matter. They're not important. They're not like the rest of us. What happens to them doesn't affect the rest of us. All of that is lies. We found out about what had been happening in France. The women would be approached by the police and told they had committed a crime and they had to pay the fine right then. So they took over the churches. Our children don't want their mothers in prison. That was their central propaganda, making it clear that they were mothers like everybody else and that they were being persecuted. When the women in England heard that, a couple of them came to me and said, we want to form an organization and will you speak for us? The women who came to me to represent the ECP could not be public. They would have been arrested, they would have been harassed, but it doesn't go on forever. At a certain point, either an individual will break the mold or something will form outside of the profession and make it possible for sex workers to speak, not only to find a spokeswoman like I was, but to speak in their own name. And I don't think that's so long in coming. I hope I can find this place now. <laughs> Very hidden away. I think it was one of those houses, one here, where it's been closed at the bottom. And how, what the police did with this flat was they informed the owner that the building was used for so-called immoral purposes and they uh, threatened the owner that if they didn't deal with it they the owners would be prosecuted so the landlord had to evict the women I'm going to start with signs. This is what the police officer said about what he saw. At the door's entrance, you can see signs as follows in the stairwell. First floor, Roxy Blonde, Sexy Beautiful, Brand New. Second floor, Claudia, Busty Beautiful, Thai Friendly Model. Is that a fair description so far? There's no one there with a Roxy hair, so that can't be true. Our signs are mostly with our names. OK, so we start again. As you come up the stairs, there's a sign saying, we're open, stop here. Well, if we're upstairs, you can't say stop here. That doesn't make sense. 
You say this if the client is on the first floor and you don't want them to go up. Do you accept there are signs in the building which do not have the girls' names on them? Some signs say models. Yes. You didn't make any of the other signs, did you? I do my own signs. You do your own signs. Signs with no names, someone else makes. The other girls do their own signs too. There's nobody else to make signs for us. But someone must make the signs with no names on them, correct? No names like what? Models, for example. I made the model signs. You made that sign? Yes, and I did it in three different colours too. Pink, orange and green. I like to vary. Yes, it was me and the girls. We worked between us, so we talked about getting a nice neon sign. You know, because of the light. I want to emphasise that the signage on the flat's door is quite sophisticated. There is a separate power source. Do you mean to say that you constructed all that by yourself? Of course not. We went to the saw, bought the neon we liked, then hired an electrician man to install it. Your Honour, the sign says, models first and second floor, come and see, and again in a quite sophisticated display, which indicates they are not working independently. It indicates organisation, because I put it up there with my friends. There were a whole series of court cases with women appealing against the closure notices that the closure orders would not be put on. The police gave contrary evidence. They said women were being controlled by an unknown shadowy figure who nobody ever saw and they never produced any evidence of. It's completely absurd to say that somebody is being controlled in prostitution as a, something that should be prosecuted when there is no force or coercion taking place. Identifying a scoundrel but never being able to produce him or them means that the police lie and that they lie profusely and that they say anything that's convenient because they know that they're not going to be punished for it and in fact in this case against sex workers they're going to be commended. We have a police officer's account of a conversation between himself and Claudia. She said that she had been told she could work three days a week is it possible that she was told by someone else that she had to work three days a week? No. I go on holidays every year in December. Before I leave, I speak with Claudia. I know that she needs money because she has kids. So I ask her if she wants extra work in my flat. Claudia said she had been told she could work three days a week. No. I told her that I work three or four days a week. But when she's in the flat, that's her business. She said she kept all the money only after payment. After paying what? After paying the fee to whoever owns the property. Or to someone else. That is not true. She receives money from the client and keeps it. The rent is £80 a day, which we pay at the end of the day. She said that in a day she has ten customers. Could that be right? I don't know. It's her business. That sounds like a lot. I can't say how many clients she has, because I've never been in the same flat with her. From your own experience, do you accept that ten customers a day is quite a lot? I don't want to answer this question. It's too personal. Well, it depends on the day, on how I feel. Usually, for me, the more the better. Know, you need to know that an all-party parliamentary group on prostitution has just come out with proposals to increase the criminalisation of sex work. We know that this crackdown that they're proposing is not being done in isolation. They went in Boulogne Woods, which is a water near Paris, and just with horses and with all the cops, all sorts of cops possible, and they just arrest every, everyone. One of the biggest problems was shut down recently in Ankara 
the capital of Turkey, and all women who worked there were pushed into the streets to work illegally and in unsafe situations. This campaign for the Swedish model is an ideological driven campaign by conservative Catholics and radical feminists. They're being proposed by an MLA called Morton Morrow. And they're, you know, anti choice, anti LGBT rights, anti women in general, anti anybody pretty much who isn't a white. Uh, non-disabled Protestant man. Um, <laughs> no, like I'm not even. I'm not even joking. It's quite ironic that the authorities want to tell us what rape is. I know a lady who was petrified that when she was in front of a court, that the judge was one of her clients. <laughs> Because when girls in Rochdale were being abused, underage girls, social services and the police said that those girls were prostitutes and that it was a lifestyle choice. Their abuse was a lifestyle choice. How would criminalizing clients of sex workers help women in this situation? We need money and support and the right to stay. Thank you. Yeah.